Hey everybody, I want to start off today by congratulating my friend Bob at Retro RGB for his 300th episode of the weekly Retro Roundup. Retro RGB has been at the center of the retro gaming community. Bob's work has really helped me in too many ways to go through with you here. And to be completely honest with you, without his work at Retro RGB, there probably would be no retro tech. I would have never gotten into uh, restoring CRTs or even looking at older Sony PVMs. I wouldn't have even known they would have existed without Retro RGB's page dedicated to the topic. So thanks, Bob, for all the awesome work you and your team do over at Retro RGB. Hopefully soon I can get to work on your CRTs and maybe next time you come and visit, we can try to drink all the beer in town. But I just wanted to say that congratulations and thank you. Now let's take a closer look at this Daft Punk helmet CRT. Hey everybody, welcome back. You know, it's been a little bit since I've showed off any kind of pickups and I have a pickup that I recently got from Facebook Marketplace right here. And it's so cool, I definitely wanted to show it off. I thought maybe we could clean it up a little bit because as you can tell, it's in pretty rough shape. It's got some uh, tape adhesive left over up here and then uh, just needs a good cleaning. I also want to check out the inside, but how about first off just the cool aesthetic look at this. This is obviously a portable television and this is one of the later models. This one is specifically from 2004. The cool thing about this is not only does it have this really neat almost space helmet like front design over the tube area, but this particular model does come with uh, both FM and AM radio, so you can still pick up those stations here using this as a radio. And if you look behind here, it does have an antenna that is just a standard FM radio antenna, also AM. And it's got a nice handle right here at the top. Now this tube, it looks to be about five inches in uh, diagonal size right there. And then we've got our tuning knob over here on the right hand side, volume control. This is a selection that will let us choose whether we want to be on the TV or the radio. And then what kind of signal we're going to be looking for. We can use our tuning knob to adjust and find the station on whichever frequency we're looking at. It's not a very deep tube. And the reason behind that is because this is only a black and white tube. Again, there's no color. What attracted me the most to this television was that it had composite video input. So I was really blown away that it had that. I've not seen many with composite video and audio inputs like this. So I definitely wanted to get it. Now you'll notice we can put in here DC 12 volt in as long as the center is positive and the outer is negative and it fits that. We also have antenna in, phone in, V-hold, brightness, and contrast adjustments. And then you'll notice I've already got the battery bay open, but this could run on a bunch of DC 1.5 volt uh, C size batteries. See in there? Yeah. It could run on C size batteries and you would need to have, wow, 10 of them in here to get this to run. And I don't even know how long that would last, but that would cost a ton of money Thankfully, there's the other power options. This is the only way it looks like to open and get inside of this CRT is these little screws right here, which are marked with arrows. There is a screw right there and then one on the opposite side. And I don't really see any other screws. So we need to get those off so we can remove the front face plate. Now, before I do all that, what I'd like to do is at least turn it on and let's run a quick test and see how it looks. Well, here's the power supply I'll be using. It was just one that I had on hand that did have 12 volts, just like it needs. It does fit and it does have the right pinout. And so we're going to just plug that back here into the DC in right there. And then I've got my audio and video plugins back here. And so we'll go ahead and connect the audio, which is just a Y cable from stereo audio and then composite video. And that's going into a Super Nintendo. So let's put all that out of the way and then let's flick on the TV and see how it works. We go forward for TV power. It's coming on. 
Okay, we've got the SNES boot up screen here for the SD to SNES ROM cart. Real quickly, we'll boot up a ROM and see how it looks. But this is R Type 3. Let me turn down the lights. Oh, yeah, see the tube is really sharp. Black and white tubes tend to be a lot higher in resolution simply because they only have one color. And the other cool thing is when I record this, the color actually comes out and looks a little bit blue. Yeah, there's a quick look at that composite image. Okay, so let's try some sound on here and see if we can't get volume. Yeah, there we go. It's not very loud, but we do get sound. Let's take it apart and clean it up a little bit. All right, we've got our shell taken apart here. Unfortunately, there was a little bit of plastic that broke off up here, and that was holding holding the shell together at the top. But the back of the shell is pretty simple. We've got our antenna connection back there. Then we've got just our speaker right here, and then our battery bay. And that's really it. The rest is just slotted for all the parts on our main circuit board. So we can really, pretty much remove this speaker and the few other cables and get a good clean on this hopefully. Now this is the front part so to get this out we would need to remove the tube entirely and the circuit board's already free a little bit. Now over here on this side this is our tuner and as you saw earlier the tuning wheel right here as it turns it mechanically turns this wheel right here which turns the tuner and that tracks and picks up and does all its analog stuff to get your station. All right, so here's this tube first off. And this is our anode cap here, which goes on to the flyback down here on the circuit board. The only stuff we have over here is, yeah, we have a deflection yoke, but it's epoxied into place here on the back of the tube, so there's no way to adjust that. And then there's the yoke cables going down into the circuit board. They're soldered into place. And then we have a very simple neck board. Again, since this is only a black and white tube, there's very few connections that are actually important on this as compared to like a colored tube. And there's not as much stuff being driven inside of there. It's only going to have the single no color gun. So we've got that again, the tuner over here on this side. If you look at our main circuit board, uh, we've got, this is probably the controller unit down here that uh, does the switching between whatever input you're using, because this uses an automatic switcher. So that's, that's the logic on this board. We've got a bunch of Chong, uh, Chang capacitors in here, and those are, at least they're 105 degrees, but those are the cheaper branded ones, but they are 105 degrees, so they are at least a little bit better. And then we've got our inputs back here and our controls. And on the side, we can look at this little tiny flyback. And um, 
then our eyes sees that are probably controlling you know like our vertical and our vertical circuit there's probably something in here for a horizontal circuit too and uh, so it's a pr very simple circuit board here this is the RF tuner of the silver encased piece right here I want to look at the bottom side of this whole board and see how that looks this is an important thing to look at and inspect. Uh, it does look like maybe after the fact some hand soldering had to be done. And uh, well, look down here. Check this out. Let's look down here. Wow. Actually, that to me looks like a board. The board's cracked, possibly. That's not. Is it just surface level? I don't know. See, it looks like it's going beyond the solder mask. I'm not sure whether that's just a scratch. That may just be a scratch on there. Or it could possibly be a board break. I don't know. It looks like maybe looking at it closer, it might be just a scratch. But that's something that you know you'd want to look for, stuff like that and cold solder joints. I didn't see anything wrong with the way this thing was working. And this board, it doesn't look like it split or had any stress right there. That's kind of interesting that it's just got those cracks or those marks, maybe. Maybe that scratch was just done in assembly. Well, now that you've seen the inside of this black and white television, let's go ahead and get it cleaned up and make it look a little bit better. All right, everybody, here's our finished up CRT. And I've created a little monster here in the Darth Vader doll slash Daft Punk super soldier <laughs> astronaut man here out of this lovely CRT I was able to get a lot of that plastic cleaned up nicely and just check out how crystal clear that picture is for just being a composite video signal the tube actually is higher resolution since there's no color in it and uh, it just really looks extra sharp and that's why a lot of the black and white tubes would have been used for security purposes they were cheaper to produce and they came out with a much higher resolution picture than color. They didn't require nearly as much adjustment. There really wasn't much to adjust inside of here. And as you can tell on the screen, there's not really much that needs to be adjusted. Now I was able to get the volume to work a bit better, so it should have really high. Yeah, see, now it gets incredibly loud and um, just the sound is unreal for a mono speaker. It can get even higher than that, but. I don't want to make everybody's ears hurt, but that's that's what it looks like. I think these are extra cool for the last CRTs. And this one may make its way into some future episodes just as like a cameo appearance. Uh, but anyway, that's all there is to this video, guys. Thanks again for watching. And I will see you all next time with some more retro content.